All right, guys, we're gonna do a little kind of basic how-to on Inkscape. Um, again, I'm not a pro. I had zero CAD experience um, up to about a year ago, and I was forced to learn it because after I bought my plasma table, I quickly realized there's way more to it than the table just cutting out whatever you want, right? You can buy a ton of files on Etsy and everything else, uh, but I'm just going to show you guys how to create your own basic um, DXF file, basically. Um, just it's, it's super simple. I don't know all the ins and outs of Inkscape, but I know enough uh, to be able to make signs and they do make money. Um, my table paid for itself in less than a year. So, um, and where I live, it's flooded with uh, plasma table owners and stuff. So I'm sure if you're in a rural area, uh, near live near a small town, whatever, you could very soon you could be uh, making damn good money. So here we go, okay? I'm gonna take, I already started just for uh, time's sake, but what I, since Christmas is coming up, um, what I did was I Googled Christmas silhouette images, right? And this was the one that I picked, um, but we can pick really any one this one um, looks like it would be pretty good because there's not a lot of fine, fine detail. And it looks like everything is already connected together. Um, so that looks like a really quick, uh, simple one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that image. And I'm going to copy that image. Okay. Now I'm going to take, uh, and I've already opened up the Inkscape. Whoops. Again, I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. Um, let's just minimize that. Okay, so now I'm in Inkscape, right? Um, all I did was double click on my Inkscape and I'm going to create a new one since I already have this page up. So I'm gonna create a new page, right? This is what you're going to be starting with. We copied that image, and I'm pretty sure I have to have Inkscape open in order to have the copy function work. So I'm going to right click, and I'm going to hit paste. Okay, now we've got it pasted on our page. Um, I'll blow it up a little bit. It, this one looks a little cloudy, so we'll see how it bitmaps. But now you can either right click and go down to trace bitmap or you can come up here to path and the third one down is trace bitmap. So I'm gonna click trace bitmap, I'm gonna hit update and that's gonna bring it into this window. Now let's apply that and close this out. Okay, now, now we have a vector file here that has been bitmapped, and this is our old one. So I, we don't want this. I'm going to right click and delete that, and I'm going to bring this one over, and this is our bitmapped uh, file. So if you click this little icon, it has three nodes and an arrow. If you click that while this is highlighted, you'll see all the nodes. And this is what your uh, plasma program is reading. That's, that's a vector file, okay? Um, so what we'll do is we'll come up here and save this as, I'm gonna say Merry Christmas. Sign. Okay, 
And I'm going to save that under my Christmas file. Or, yeah, Christmas file. So I'm going to save that, right? And I saved that. Sorry, I went a little fast. So save as Merry Christmas sign. And down here in this window, it's going to say Inkscape SVG. Now, you can edit an SVG, okay? So you, you, if you have any work to do to this or you want to add something to it, I recommend saving a copy as an SVG. And then in order for your Plasma program to read it, it's got to be in a DXF file. So I know my Plasm has to read a DXFR14. So just scroll down in the window, click that one. And now in here, since I already saved it as a SVG, I'm going to save this one as DXF. Click Save. You're just going to click OK on this. Um, for, for my Plasm, it's a European uh, program. So we want it saved in millimeters, okay? If you save it in inches, you're going to have some goofy sizing problems. So I'm going to click millimeters, click OK, and now we actually have a DXF file that will cut, okay? Um, now this one is in pretty decent shape. Um, there's, you want to make sure there aren't any super, super fine lines because it looks big right here, but when you cut it out in an 18 inch or a, even a 12 inch sign, um, it, the fine detail is going to fall out. Okay. So now I'm going to, I've got this one saved as a DXF. I'm going to go back to this one. Okay. And this is one that I copied and pasted and bitmapped already. But if you see, there's a lot of little, it didn't copy very well, or it didn't, it doesn't look very good. Um, the more pixels a image has, the better off you're gonna be. Um, but if I either double click this, because I've already, what I did was I went to path, I traced it clicked update and then it'll come in this window and I click apply right I've already done that so now it's pixelated it's it, it's an SVG so I don't want this here so you can either click on each node or you can highlight those nodes and delete them okay um, let's see what else. I mean, all of these windows and stuff are kind of goofy. They're kind of wonky. So if I wanted to, I could come over here to the square, not the cube, but the square. And I'm going to drag this out slightly bigger than that window. Okay. Now I'm going to hold down shift and click my background image that highlights both of them and come up here to path and I'm going to hit difference and it's going to cut that out okay so let's do that again and what you can do is copy and paste it so that they're all the same size but just for time's sake I'm going to just let's see I'm going to do control C control V or you can hit Control D for duplicate and then just drag it off of the other one. So I'm going to get that kind of there. So click, shift, click the background, path, difference. Okay. Do the same here shift, click, path, difference. And you can go through and do every single one of these. Say, say you want these to be round, okay? You're going to hold shift and control when you're dragging a circle, and that will keep it a perfect circle. Otherwise, when you drag out a circle, it, it won't be 
uh, perfect. It'll it'll drag out into an oval or, or whatever. So I'm gonna do control D, control D, control D, control D. So what I did now is I duplicated that four times. All right, now I'm gonna drag this one over here, this one here, and this one here, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing. Shift, click, path, difference. Shift, click, path, difference. Oh, looks like I had more um, copies than I thought. Okay, shift, or, oops, sorry, click, shift, click, shift, I like the background and the difference. Shift, click, path, difference. Okay. Now say that I have a goofy shape like this or these and, and I don't like the way that looks. I'm just going to drag a big rectangle over it. Okay. Go back to your arrow up here. I'm going to shift click my background, go to path, and instead of difference, I'm going to union that. And, and you can also use that to join things together. Say that you, you think that uh, these reindeer are going to fall out, okay? You can bridge those together, and you can use this for lettering, too. Shift, click, path, union. Okay, so now they're joined. If you don't like the look of that rectangle, you can, using the plus and the minus buttons, you can zoom in. I'm going to double click. And I'm just going to make this kind of to where it doesn't quite look like a rectangle at least. I don't know what that is, but it doesn't look like a rectangle. <laughs> now, you're going to want to look around for any loose little junk. Okay, this one looks like crap, so let's make sure something like that. We're going to shift, click, path, union. Okay, now this is by far not perfect, okay, but you, you get the point. Using just a few tools, you can really do a lot. I'm going to go to my, uh, my text down here, and I'm going to write, oh yeah, I forgot that this thing's still tiny. It shows your dimensions up here. It's only 8 inches wide, or wide by 2 inches tall. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to make this 24 inches wide, okay? And then, let's try 10 inches tall. And just do that until it looks proportionate. Remember the minus sign, or the minus button, will zoom out. And you can see it, it doesn't look right, okay? And technically, I should have done this before I started doing all these shapes, because now my circles are not circles anymore. And it's hard to get it perfect at that point but I'm gonna try eight inches. That looks much better. Um, I could probably even go down to seven and that looks that looks even better. But yeah, you, you get the point. Uh, in here, I can tell you right now that reindeer leg's gonna, gonna fall out of there. So let's make his legs a little bit wider. And like I said, we're just playing around here. You can drag each node. You can add a node if you want to do different things. There are different functions over here for your nodes uh, to make curved lines and things like that. Um, I don't really mess with that a whole lot. Like I said, the the better image the the better the image you find the better quality it's going to come out you can see right here it's kind of rounded and, and stuff like that but i tell you what if you took that and, and we did 
Let's um, text instead. Uh, let's see. Caps lock. Happy holidays for all those people out there that don't believe in Christmas or don't celebrate it. Happy holidays is always a safe one. Okay. Um, we've got this. We're going to drag that out. Drag it way out there. And like I said, use your arrows to make it look proportionate. Um, what I'm going to do here is since this piece doesn't quite come down here, I'm going to double click on that. And I'm going to bring this node right here and right here. Now that will not join it, okay? So I'm going to take a, a rectangle about the same size. And shift, click, path, union. Now I'm going to do the same over here where it's touching. And path, union. Okay, so. We're, we're kind of connected there, but all these letters would fall out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a rectangle all the way across it. And and here you could you could stretch it out longer to match this or whatever, but go back to your arrow button. And actually... Union. Okay, now all your letters are stuck together now. They're all union. Okay? Now... <laughs> sorry, the air compressor. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight the happy holidays. Shift, click, path, union. Now, everything is union together, okay? But... Let's see. I think we're good to go there. Um, since these are not, these letters are positive, they're not being cut out of a, a rectangle or anything. Um, we're okay. None of this stuff's going to fall out. You know, if we did it, if we had a rectangle or a circle sign and we wanted to put happy holidays, you can difference that, right? But then you're going to have to bridge these letters, okay? Um, so on a negative, what we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to drag this out. We're going to take our text again and say, hello. Okay. And you can pick whatever uh, font you want, but I really like the Georgia. Um, I don't know why, but... Okay, say this is a big sign and we wanted to put somebody's name or whatever. You're going to shift, click, path, difference. Okay, now you've got a negative, right? But that O is going to fall out. So, let's drag a little rectangle. And if you want, you can change the color of that rectangle so you can actually see the difference. All right, I'm going to get that centered, and I'm going to shift, click, path, union. Okay, now we've got a stencil, though, okay? Oopsies. I twisted that. Okay, to fix that, I want to double click, and you'll get these little arrows on the corners, and you can do whatever you want with it there. So now, um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this because I don't need that. Um, right click, delete. This one I really like so far though. I'm going to keep it. And this one I'll probably work on later too. But if you did something like this and put a patina on it um, or painted it up real nice, I mean, that would, that would definitely sell. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. Um, happy holidays, 
Village. Okay, but I want to save it as an SVG because I, I'll probably edit it later. So save that. Now I want to save it again, or you can save a copy in the same folder. I'm going to put on here DXF, and I'm going to drag down and go to DXF R14 and save that one. Okay. Now we're going to go into our MyPlasm, our import screen. That, that's your import. I'm going to click the folder and I'm going to drag down to Christmas. Happy Holidays Village DXS. That's the one I want. So I'm going to click that. Open. You can see it imported here. I'm going to go ahead and put that in our, in our cut file here. I'm going to get rid of this one because I haven't worked on it yet. Delete. Now, you can use your mouse wheel to scroll in and, and zoom in and really check to make sure that everything's good. I would recommend doing this all the time uh, because I have gotten complacent and realized that my lead-ins were on the wrong side or whatever. And uh, you just want to do this to make sure nothing's going to fall out. Uh, and if, if, if you... Sorry, air compressor. Um, if, if you need to edit it, remember we saved it as an SVG, so we can just go back in there and, and bridge it or, or highlight the notes and drag it out. Again, guys, I suck at these videos, but um, like if I would have thought about it, I would have shut off my air compressor, but I didn't. Um, so hopefully it helped somebody. Um, if you don't mind, subscribe to my channel. Um, that would be great. I'll keep making more videos. And, hell, maybe maybe I can even do some TIG welding videos. We can TIG weld some titanium or aluminum or stainless. Um, you guys uh, look me up on Facebook. It's Juggernaut Weld Fab. At, uh, and same for Instagram. So check me out message me if you have questions um that's the best way to contact me if you comment on the video i don't always check those so best case scenario is uh follow me on facebook and message me um yeah you guys have a good day uh go make some money